there's um, ten great lies told by Satan. The first big lie is that unfairness exists. This lie was adopted in Eden, and it gave rise to the second lie. Satan hinted, hinted to Eve that what God was doing was because God himself was evil, a lie perpetuated to this day. It cannot be true that God is evil or unfair because God defines a parameter of goodness and justice. God is good because he is the being who defines the nature of good. It is patently impossible for God not to be good or to be unfair. Other than God being just, there is no foundation for determining what is fair. If God is not fair, then fairness loses all meaning. What is fair becomes simply what a self-professed victim thinks he or she is entitled to. In the eyes of the left, the world is not good. It takes a group to overcome the problems, because problems in the eyes of liberals are created by unfair persons on the right. For example, it was not fair for God to withhold what Adam and Eve thought they had a right to access. In more modern times, liberals see incomes as being unequal. Liberals also claim it is unfair that white men have jobs other groups want. Liberals believe the state is needed to correct unfair conditions. And that is the lie number two. The desire to right injustice using the state gives rise to the third lie. The democratic state, say liberals, has moral legitimacy because it is the voice of the majority. Might, however, does not make right. No matter how many people believe a lie, the lie is not made true. No matter how many people support an injustice, the injustice remains unjust. Even if a majority think free health care is a good idea, the cost cannot be legitimately imposed on other people. Free health care is not intrinsically a morally good policy. A policy that forces others to pay the cost of the policy is not a moral policy by virtue of the numbers of people wanting it. Slavery is not legitimized by a majority approving of it, regardless how few oppose it. The lie that morality can be decided by majority votes is the lie that permitted Adam, Eve, and Satan to claim they had a right to the fruit on the tree of light of good and evil. This is the same error that legitimizes the democratic state. Democracy is also called the tyranny, tyranny of the majority. It is wrong to murder someone. How can it be made right by a majority decision? Majorities cannot turn an immoral act into a moral one. A fourth lie that... Uh, was provided by Satan is that taxation is necessary. This lie only has traction if we suppose that governments must provide social services and that the free market cannot supply the social goods that are needed. The fifth lie is that the state must have monopoly on power. If free education becomes a right, that the state, according to liberals, must have the power to force those with the resources to make education available to those without the means to obtain the education through the free market, whether for themselves or their children. Of course, if no one voted for things they could not and did not pay for out of their own pocket, the need for the state, its powers of taxation, and its monopoly on terror would vanish. Democracy itself would be irrelevant. Everything would be provided through the free market. In short, democracy is a surreptitious way to bring in tyranny through the back door. Democracy is the power of the mob, countering the power of the exceptional individual. The sixth lie is that human rights are legal rights. This lie required by democracies. If we agree human rights exist independently of the state, democracies could not invalidate or rescind or overcome a person's human rights. This means a state would no longer have the right or to tax or otherwise remove resources from one group to benefit another group. If human rights are independent of legal rights, 
the state could not be given a monopoly on power, nor could the majority opinion have the final say. All of these lies rest on a seventh lie, that the world is material. If we are physical creatures, there is no absolute right or wrong. If an absolute right does not exist, then human rights are only what governments say they are. And since what is right is what is decided by us, the best way is to decide right and wrong by a majority decision, or democracy. However, <coughs> the notion of a physical world in which what is in our mind replicates perfectly an objective existence is both ontologically and technically untenable. Even if it were true, there is no way to test or confirm the hypothesis. All we understand is con concepts. All that is in our mind is communicatable concepts. Reality is what can be communicated in an articulate way. God spoke the world into existence. Jesus is the word of God. Reality and truth are metaphors for the truth and reality of God. Reality can be communicated because it is composed of the communications we engage in. As we learn to communicate, we learn what is real because we learn what can be communicated. Reality requires an originator of a concept that can be communicated and a way to communicate the conceptualization in symbolic form and a receiver that can receive and decode the symbology. Reality is a shared concept. Reality itself is a concept. What is real corresponds to that which corresponds to our concept of what reality is. All truth and reality is created in the mind of a being. Primarily God has information, but human beings create information also. New information is what gives us progress. Progress is the development of our concepts. The reality we have, the truth we have being given, limits the truth we can discover. The truth must be coherent with all the information that already exists in a coherent whole. We cannot increase the noise when new information is introduced. That is, what we introduce has to make sense in terms of the information and the content that has gone before. Each new understanding comes from the mind of one person standing up and telling the rest of the world they are wrong. Innovation is about adding to the information available in a coherent way. What is more ethical than the person who created new information owning what they created? By what right can a stake, state take wealth from the person who created it? If there is any fairness or justice, it is that the creator of wealth is the owner of that wealth, and no one has the obligation to pay the cost of created by someone else. These seven lies are lies because they do not and cannot make sense with the totality of the information available to us. This lack of logical coherence may not matter in a physical universe, but this is of the utmost importance in the conceptual realm. <clears throat> the eighth lie is the lie that God does not exist. If the world is material, there is no room for God. If the universe is composed of matter and all truth is verified by confirming it as a material event, the existence of God cannot be verified by the very terms of the verification process. A material world cannot be used to prove that the supernatural, i.e. non-material, events and beings exist. However, if matter cannot be proven to exist empirically, and empirical science cannot be proven to be the only source of truth, then materialism itself must be confirmed as a valid hypothesis before it can be used to discredit belief in God. In other words, we do not need to prove the supernatural realm exists if the only reason for doubting this is because of a belief in an unproven and provable physical realm. First, prove the natural world exists before claiming a concept is supernatural. A ninth lie is that mankind is an animal. 
This only makes sense if the universe is material and if matter, energy, space and time have an existence beyond the conceptual realm. If we can think of time without reference to the concept of time, or imagine space without using the concepts that compose our, our ideas of space, then we can say objective reality exists. But what is objective reality other than the concepts we use to communicate the idea of objective reality? If mankind is the concepts that compose our information about man, then he cannot be an animal, because the conception of man is too diverse from the concept of animal. They're distinct. The concept of man as animal does not make conceptual sense. It has inherent inconsistencies. Only when we think of material reality as something independently real can the idea of evolution be entertained or the belief that man must be part of the animal kingdom be held. Ten. The tenth lie is the lie that says the individual is the key social unit. The true social unit is a church or social network. The individual has no identity apart from the group. Our identity is formed within the group. This takes reality away from the material realm. Community is not a physical construct. It is purely spiritual, as is the church. We find our place and identity through engagement with other people. This is why the free market is so vital and why socialism is so destructive. As humans, we need to help each other engage with others of their kind. We must not permit isolation or redundancy of people to exist. Everyone is a vital part of society and a key to the development of our own identity. Society is the environment in which we seek to create concepts that are coherent with each other through the communications we have with each other. We must create a narrative in our dialogues that has no inconsistencies. Lies are destructive of the social fabric and even our human identity because they create division and disharmony. We cannot fit lies together because if they truly meshed with everything else, they would not be lies. Lies by definition are inconsistent with the truths we have. One inconsistency is enough to invalidate a concept and define it as a lie. We have already noted that there is no way to reconcile the state's power of taxation with the concept of human rights or justice. We must do away with the state to have human rights and justice. And if we must do this, then the concept of materialism also must fall. If these ideas fall, the entire list of ten items must all be discarded as lies because they are all linked. At this point, the reader continued to embrace these ten lies, knowing fully and consciously they are lies, or he and she can choose to step forward into reality, a consistency of coherent, coherent concepts. Each one of us must make this choice for him or herself. 